All right, hopefully you can hear this pretty well. I'm back here and everybody's bowling beside me, but uh, we got a ball accelerator motor that went out. Uh, I'm coming back to diagnose it. Uh, some other associates took a look at it and weren't quite able to narrow it down. I noticed when I got back here to the box, I could smell uh, what smells like a capacitor fried or some electrode, something that's burned uh, on the circuit board somewhere. We do notice that we've got all of our 11 green lights, green LEDs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So I came down here on the lower board and traced down what I think is the issue, or at least where I smelled it, where I see it. I've got a relay. I'll try and show you with my light right here. Wow, blinding everybody. Uh, right there, I got it lit up. Right in the dead, we'll put it in the dead center of the screen. That relay right there is fried out. It's black all around it. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that whole panel board and just see if I can switch out this board, see if that fixes it before I have to pull out the whole ball accelerator assembly underneath. All right, I've got my uh, next gen high voltage PB PCB here to install. I uh, just want to let you know that uh, I did cut the power off right here for the lockout and as well I disconnected the main power. Uh, don't be fooled by just turning off the power to think that you're not going to get lit up sticking your hands down in the bottom. Uh, I'm also getting ready to ground myself out on the equipment so I don't short out the circuit board as I'm installing it. Uh, always remember whenever you mail the boards back in for any repairs to keep them in their anti-static bags. Uh, that way the B-Rex will uh, warranty it. Apologize for all the bowling in the background. All right, so I uh, I disconnected. I believe it's a 20-pin uh, terminal cable from the top, just to give myself room to work down below. Also disconnected the ribbon cable. Disconnected all of the terminals inside, and I'm getting ready to pull out the main PCB. I took the screws off as well. Uh, I didn't want to take the screws off until I got all my wires disconnected. Looks like I got one more screw left in there to get out before I can pull this thing out, so give me one moment. Alright, so I got that last screw out, now I'm going to go ahead and pull the board out. Try and do this one handed here. I snag it on. Uh, it's not going to work one handed, I'm going to go ahead and explain. Uh, with, I'm going to get my free hand and I'm going to pull a lot of these wires out of my way and bring them back as I pull the panel out from the top this direction. It's about my best way or your best way to try and get it out of there. You've got too much stuff installed on the sides to try and just pull it straight out through the middle. I know it just looks like a big picture of colored spaghetti. I'm going to pause it and I'm going to use both hands to pull it out. Okay, so it's a little bit tighter than I remember. I uh, haven't still got it out yet. I want to let everybody know that I'm going to take, I took some of these side plugs out from the, like the distributor power and my sweep power and my ball accelerator power. Actually disconnected those plugs. I'm going to do, I did it on the other side as well. And then I'm going to take some vice grips and there are, uh, if I show you on this one right here, try and get in the light. Right there in the middle, there's uh, catches for the, ins for the actual side housing of this next gen box. I'm going to squeeze on those, I'll show you right out here, I'll squeeze on just those little tips with my vice grips, compress them, and I'm going to push the actual connector back into the box, see if I can do one here real quick, there we go, push it in and now I'm going to pull it into the inside. I'm going to get a couple of these upper ones just out of my way. That should give me more of that tilt room to extract the board. Should make it a lot easier. All right, I'm going to try and uh, hopefully you can hear me when I do this. I'm going to go ahead and take the vice grips and uh, channel lock. Go ahead and pop some more of these out. Popping them out, pushing the two tabs in. Try that. I think I got enough of the top ones out to give me some slack to pull this board out. I am still grounded out to let you know. 
Sorry if you can't hear me very well with everybody bowling. Uh, some uh, jumpers go from one uh, one ju uh, one connection to another. I thought I'd leave it on the board. I'm just going to get it out of my way. Looks like I need to pull another one out of my way to get it out of here. Both, both sides. As you can see, that's, that's giving me enough slack and clearance to get it out now. Get on up. Alright, so I got the board out here. Um, hopefully you can see it right here at the top. Fried pretty bad, all blackened, even to the back side of the board. my hand on it so it stays grounded. Don't want to get any shorts in it. Or static charges. Sorry if I'm up in the camera. Take my other board out. Go ahead and put it in the static protection here. Alright, back in the bag. I got my new repaired board. Got all my fuses in it. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and drop it back in. It's been a while since I had to change out one of these boards. That's why I forgot I had to extract some of them upper terminals to make room. Now I got the board resting in there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause the camera. I'm going to put all the screws back in. I'm going to get all my jumper terminals back up and then we'll see if that was the fix to this. Alright, I've got the uh, panel back in. I was getting ready to start on my uh, putting all the jumpers and reconnecting those in the, to the terminals. I just wanted to say one thing. Uh, don't get in a hurry. Don't hook up things wrong. Take your time. Make sure everything's hooked up. Uh, if you're confused about where a spot goes, you could always look at a pair of lanes next to you. If you don't have an extra pair of lanes, uh, I'd recommend labeling them as you take them off, but a lot of these are already labeled. If you look for the little labels on the wires, anything that's not labeled, label it yourself. Or get you a cell phone and be sure to take a picture of it. That's what I do a lot of times. I don't have to remember anything so long as I can take a picture of where the wires were beforehand. All right, so there's uh, 43 jumpers to check. That's 43, uh, except for number 41 is open. There should be nothing on jumper number 41. I've got all of them hooked up. I got all my side cables hooked up. I got to reconnect my ribbon. Push it in there nice and easy. Don't bend any terminals over. Connect my 20 pin connector. I did a slow methodical check after I plugged everything in. I went one clear through 43 all the way to the bottom one at a time, making sure that everything's connected right and seated properly. I believe now it's time to power it up and uh, hopefully it doesn't blow the next gen off. I still got my uh, power switch off. I'm going to connect my main power first.
quick double check on the outside. All right, now I'm going to power it up on the main switch on the emergency cutoff. Or not emergency cutoff, but the lockout. Nothing appears to be uh, blowing. No uh, resistors or diodes or capacitors. I've got all 11 green lights. I'm going to just try and turn a, the pin setter on. Well, when it was shut down, it was in frameworks. It might come back on in frameworks. I don't know. Not sure. I believe it's probably shut off in the back as well. So I'm going to turn the back on and see. thought I'd bring you to the back and uh, show you what was the culprit of all of this. Uh, looks like some open bowlers didn't know when to let us know that there are some balls stuck. Thank you very much. So that stopped up the transport band and the ball accelerator and everything, and that's what fried it. So let me clear it out, and then I'll see if I can get it going. Just want to be sure that uh, give a shout out to all my open bowlers who, for their sake, this video would not be possible. All right, everybody. So I got it all cleared out. Uh, you can see that it actually wasn't the ball accelerator motor down here in the inside because the ball accelerator motor is working fine. Now that I put in the new PCB, high voltage PCB that got fried, uh, you can see everything setting up, pin setters working again. Chose the right path. Hope this helps you all out.